It's not always worth acquiring data in the sulfur-2 band because some objects don't emit light or are particularly weak in this band. Let's look at what happens when we do a color combination with this object. Planetary nebulas are an exception because they don't always emit more strongly in the hydrogen alpha band. They are often much brighter in the oxygen 3 band. As a result, if we combine this Hubble palette image, the object looks bluish instead of greenish. We're going to calibrate the color now using color calibration. We want to set the nebula as the white reference and an adjacent area as the background reference. So we use Preview 1 as the region of interest for the white reference and Preview 2 as the region of interest for the background. And we uncheck the Structure Detection checkbox. When we apply this process, the nebula brightness is equalized across the three bands. This means that we have to multiply the sulfur band by a very large number because the brightness of this band is just 3% of the brightness of the nebula in the oxygen band. We're therefore multiplying the sulfur band by 30, and the result is a very noisy image because we hardly have any data in the R channel. So we cannot use the sulfur-2 band to compose a narrowband image of this nebula. It's always a good idea to do some research on the object we're photographing before we start taking pictures. For example, this nebula is much brighter in the nitrogen-2 band. If we have that filter, we can use it instead of the sulfur-2 filter in the red channel. If we do this combination, and calibrate the color, we get an image with a much more tolerable noise level. Here we can see that we get a different structure distribution with the nitrogen-2 than with the hydrogen-alpha and oxygen-3, but unlike the sulfur-2, the nitrogen-2 doesn't add unwanted noise to the image. With this type of image, we can also use SPCC, but for the resulting color to have meaning, the brightness of the three bands must be similar. For example, if we try using SPCC on this image, we'll soon see that the tool isn't right for this purpose because SPCC calibrates the intensity of each emission line based on the nebula's real emissions. In other words, it sets the ratios based on what the nebula is emitting, just like we would get if we took a spectrum of the nebula. To work in narrowband with SPCC, we need to enable narrowband filters mode and change the white reference to photon flux. Now we add the wavelength for each filter, set the region of interest for the sky background, and calibrate. The result, predictably, is an even greener nebula because we've multiplied the blue channel by 0.78 and the red channel by 0.97. This is because the intensity of the hydrogen alpha emission in this nebula is much greater than that of the oxygen-3 and sulfur-2. If we don't change the ratios of the three emission lines, we don't get much visual information. This might make sense in nebulas where the three bands are more balanced. Let's try with an image of M97. For this image, we put the wavelength of the nitrogen-2 filter here, select an area for the sky background, and click on Apply. Calibrating with SPCC works in this case because it shows the different structures that hint at the chemical composition of the nebula. Another color composition that may work with SPCC is HOO, where the hydrogen alpha is put in the red channel and the oxygen 3 in the green and blue. 
This type of composition is very effective if we want to combine this narrowband image later with images of stars and galaxies with RGB filters. If we configure SPCC for these wavelengths, the color calibration will show us the natural brightness of the two emission lines. We can then combine the image of the nebula with a broadband image of the stars or galaxies. Each of these tools will give the color a different meaning, so we need to choose which one we use in each case based on the object we're photographing and our specific objectives.